In a world where right and wrong blend into a confusing mix, there's a man named Jay. He's not your typical bad guy. His reasons for doing things are complicated. He's after power and wants to control his life story. But deep down, he might feel like he's not enough. Jay's like a shadow, moving in the parts of our minds where things aren't clear. He's not just a bad guy. Inside, he's fighting with himself, trying to figure out who he is and why he does what he does. He doesn't even fully understand the hidden reasons behind his actions. As Jay walks through this maze of the mind, his tricks aren't just to fool people. They show us our deepest fears and wants, including his own. He's not just trying to control others. He's also searching for truth and who he really is. When Jay manipulates people, he makes them and himself face their darkest thoughts. He makes us question if we really control our lives, who we are, and what's really true. In his world, tricking people is more than just getting what he wants. It's about understanding life and ourselves. Jay's tale takes us deep into the heart and mind, but it's not just about manipulation. It's a quest for self-discovery, asking hard questions, and seeking the truth about ourselves. Now let's dive into specific techniques he uses in his pursuit of ultimate control. Stay tuned and learn from the best. Think about a time when someone lied to you, but you didn't know until it was too late. That's what Jay does. He's sneaky, keeping you in the dark, all while he gets ahead. In Jay's world, drama is another card he plays masterfully. You know those people who always seem to be at the center of some drama? That's what Jay does, but he does it on purpose. He's not just looking for attention, he's playing a deeper game. Take a group of three friends, for example. Jay would be the one quietly causing trouble between the other two, spreading rumors and stories to turn them against each other. Why? Because then, they'll both come to him, telling him their problems and looking for advice. In their eyes, he's the comforting friend, but in reality, he's the one pulling the strings. It's not just in friendships. In a relationship, Someone like Jay might keep starting arguments for no reason. They want their partner to be constantly focused on them, responding to their drama. It's a way for them to feel important and in control, keeping their partner's attention solely on them and their needs. This is the kind of manipulation Jay shines at, creating chaos, then stepping in as the savior, all the while controlling the narrative from behind the scenes. His outbursts of emotion are not random, but calculated moves in his game of control. He knows that loud, dramatic displays can be powerful tools to get what he wants. It's not just about being emotional. It's about knowing when and where to unleash these emotions for maximum effect. Imagine a couple in a restaurant. If one partner wants something and the other is resisting, someone like Jay would turn up the volume. He'd start an argument, raising his voice just enough to draw attention. He's aware that creating a scene in public puts pressure on his partner. The embarrassment, the uncomfortable stares from others, all play into his hands. He knows that under such scrutiny, most people will cave just to end the spectacle. This tactic is subtle yet effective. It's about creating a situation where the other person feels they have no choice but to comply. He plays the victim to get attention. Every time someone has a problem, Jay has a bigger one. He turns their small issues into chances to talk about his own struggles. For example, if you tell Jay you're feeling sick, he'll start talking about his constant headaches. If you forget something small, like your coffee cup. He'll tell a dramatic story about how his expensive coffee machine broke. He always makes his problems sound worse than yours. This isn't just about getting attention. It's Jay's way to control the conversation and make people feel sorry for him. By acting like he's always having a hard time, he keeps people focused on him and his problems. This way, he becomes the main character in every situation, making others care more about him than themselves. He positions himself as the person everyone needs, the one you can't live without. In every group, he's the center of attention, drawing people in, making them feel like they should be part of his circle. For Jay, it's not just about being needed. It's about making you believe you're nothing without him. In relationships, he'll remind his partner constantly that they're lost without him. He's there in your moments of need, doing favors, but not without a price. With Jay, nothing is ever truly free. He builds this illusion that you need him in your life. And as you start relying on him, his control over you strengthens. It's a calculated move. He steps in when you're vulnerable, becoming an essential part of your life. The more support he offers, the deeper he embeds himself in your emotions, using every opportunity to take advantage of you. His help isn't about generosity. It's a strategic move to ensure his dominance and control. He shares just enough truth to make you trust him, all while concealing the critical parts of the story. This partial truth makes the betrayal sting even more when the whole picture finally comes into focus. Imagine you're competing for a promotion at work. Jay appears to be on your side, feeding you inside information. You feel grateful, thinking he genuinely cares about your success. But in reality, Jay's only telling you what he wants you to know. He's withholding the most crucial details, 
keeping the ace up his sleeve. This technique isn't just about information control. It's about power. Jay makes you feel indebted to him. You think you owe him for his supposed generosity, not realizing he's playing you. He's not just a source of information. He's a strategist, always staying several steps ahead in this game of manipulation and control. In Jay's world of shadows and deception, fake friendships are just another tool in his arsenal. He weaves a facade of friendship, all while gathering information to use against you. In the professional arena, he's the colleague who appears to be an ally, but is actually a wolf in sheep's clothing. Imagine meeting someone who seems genuinely interested in you, asking personal questions right off the bat. It feels flattering at first, until you realize it's a calculated move. Jay uses this tactic to gain your trust and learn your secrets, not to foster a real friendship. Control is at the heart of every conversation with Jay. He skillfully steers discussions to suit his agenda, pushing you towards decisions that serve his purpose, often catching you off guard. His ability to manipulate the flow of conversation is subtle yet effective, leaving you feeling like you've made decisions independently, while in reality, they're all part of his grand design. Commitment is another arena where Jay's manipulative nature shines. He shies away from commitments unless they serve his interests. You might find yourself waiting on a response from Jay for something crucial, only to realize he's using his non-commitment as leverage. He's not interested in helping unless it gives him a handle to control you, to twist situations in his favor. In Jay's world, commitment is not about solidarity or support. It's a strategic move in the intricate chess game of manipulation and control. He pretends he doesn't know things, even when he knows a lot. This trick works great at work. Imagine a coworker who knows all about a task but says they don't. The job gets passed to someone else, and they're off the hook. This trick also works with friends. When friends argue, Jay acts like he doesn't know what's going on. This way, nobody suspects him, and he avoids trouble. Then there's the blame game. Jay is really good at keeping himself out of trouble. He never takes responsibility and always blames others for problems. Especially when things get serious and he might look bad, he points fingers at everyone else. To him, he's never the cause of any problem. He makes sure someone else always takes the fall. He knows exactly how to flatter someone, making them feel special and understood. When he compliments you, it's hard not to like him more. But it's not always about being nice. Then there's controlling decisions, especially in romantic relationships. Imagine your partner subtly influencing your choices. At first, it seems like they're just trying to make you happy. But slowly, you realize you're changing your plans, your style, even your haircut, just to please them. It starts with small, harmless suggestions. But before you know it, you're living your life according to their script, not yours. You're not just trying to make them happy. You're being controlled without even knowing it. That's all for today, my friend. Until next time, always remember, people aren't inherently evil, but the moment they see an advantage for themselves, they can change in the blink of an eye. Stay vigilant and wise.